Hey, this is Dan Palanchar, Senior Solutions Consultant with School of Sheets. And today I'm going to answer a question from the Smartsheet community. Uh, somebody is wondering how to populate a date field when a status has changed. So this person says I need to populate a start date field to today when my status has changed to in progress. I can write a formula, but the start date is removed when the status changes to completed. How can I populate the field and keep the value even if the status has changed? So um, this is not as simple as it might seem to do. The current situation that I think this person is experiencing is their start date um, column has this type of formula. If status equals in progress, return today's date. And this will work just fine. On the surface at least. It doesn't it doesn't actually work for a few reasons. So first um, you might notice, you may or may not notice the today function is being used here, and the today function literally just returns today's date based on whatever you're looking at this sheet. Um, so what this person is trying to accomplish is having this start date be equal to the date when the status was changed to in progress. Now, if this stays in progress for more than one day, say if it's still in progress tomorrow, if I come and look at this sheet, it'll say 821. So it's not actually going to be accurate to do it this way. And uh, the other problem which this person pointed out is when you change the status to completed, this um, disappears. So what we need to do is find a way to get the start date into this column when the status turns to in progress and we want it to not change and we also want it to stay. So the way we're going to do this is with um, a copy row automation. Whenever the status changes to in progress we are going to copy the row to another sheet and that's going to leave a record via this modified um, column here that we can reference to determine when that change is made. So let's set it up. So first thing we need to do is build our workflow. So we can go to automation, create workflow. I'm going to name this. I think it's a best practice just to name things in a way that describe what they are. In case we have many automations, you're going back to look at them, etc. You want to uh, see at a glance what you're working with. So when the status changes to in progress, we want to copy rows and I created basically a copy, exact, exact copy actually, of this sheet that we're looking at, and it's going to uh, send our data over there. So now that's built, let's say task three gets started. The automation is going to send it over to this sheet momentarily. There we go, sometimes it just takes a second. All right, so we have our information here. Now, what we can do is use a index match to pull in the date from the modified field on the second sheet and then uh, return the date that this change was made when we change it in progress. And the reason we're doing it on a separate sheet is because um, this modified column, anytime you change the information in a row, this is going to change. So it's really not uh, uncommon that there are tasks that take you know, more than one day to accomplish, and you're updating information, you might have like a status field or whatnot, or like a notes column that you're updating. So this modified field, you know, if we have something like notes here, and I type in it, when we save this, this just changed to 954. And if I make a change in here tomorrow, this is going to say 821. So we can't reference the modified field in any row that's going to be updated, you know, over time for this exercise. So what we need to do is just get a little index match going. So we're going to do index. We are going to find our copied sheet. We want to pull in the modified date. And I'm going to name the sheet reference in a way that I know what it is. Again, it's the best practice. Now we need to match it. In this case, I'm going to use the task name any unique identifier will work. It just needs to be consistent in your formula. Okay. So boom, now we have our start date of 8.21.20. Why is it 8.21? Well, because it's after um, 5 p.m. So it's considering as the next day. So what you can do, you can actually do a date correction by referencing the time um, in the modified and then subtracting a date appropriately if you need to, 
I'm not going to go through that process right now, but it can be done. Um, now the important thing, let's say, so we need to put this in the other columns here. I'll throw an if error around here to prevent the no match from popping up. Okay. Um, you could also just have it be blank if you wanted to by using empty quotes, but I prefer to have it parse out something. So let's get task four in here. Not start it. Put it in progress. This is going to send the row over to our copy sheet. And we can see, there it is. And now it has already found the appropriate date. Now we could technically do the same thing for a completion date by setting up the automation to run when completed was selected. Um, the difference there would be we would now get into a situation where we'd have multiple we'd have multiple rows in our copied sheet for each task. So we would want to nest a um, max or min within our index. We actually probably want to do a collect max to get either the most uh, recent value for completed or the minimum value for start date. So, you know, you can basically have the system run all the status updates. Um, but as written, this is how you would accomplish pulling in the start date from a status change in progress. And again, um, depending on, you know, what hours of the day you're working, there might need to be a date correction that gets utilized in a separate column to subtract the date from here if possible. This is really just based on the fact that uh, Smartsheet servers run in a certain time zone and it's interpreted as the following day when it's after a certain hour. I'm for um, specific time for what it's worth. Um, but anyways, that's the majority of how you would set this up, and I hope that you found it useful. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up, and subscribe for more Smartsheet tutorials. Thanks.